Some day I was with my nephew and uh, he was sitting next to him and I always pray before we go somewhere and I was taking him to the doctor and we was going down there I said, well, let's pray and I noticed he was looking at me. I think he was going to make sure I had my eyes open <laughs> while I was driving. So I said, don't worry about it, brother. I'm not going to close my eyes. I, I trust the Lord, but I am going to look while I'm driving. So well, if you would go ahead and look, if you're in Acts uh, chapter 27, look at verse 20. I'm going to break these verses down for you, but the title of the message is Help in the Hurricane. Help in the Hurricane. Now Paul, in this chapter, we find that Paul is headed to Rome to stand before Caesar. He's accused of starting riots and stirring up the people, and what he's doing is sharing the gospel, uh, winning people to Jesus, and it's caused uh, a turmoil in Rome, or around uh, different places, and now He's appealed to, he's been put in jail, but he's appealed to Caesar, so they're shipping him uh, to Rome to stand before Caesar. Now, as he's been praying, him being a sailor, uh, uh, he's uh, well equipped and understands and knowledgeable of sailing. He realizes that the time that they're about to sail is not the best time that it's very dangerous. As you read through chapter 27, I'm not going to read all those verses. I'm going to break down 20 through 25 for you. But Paul realizes that it's a dangerous time to sail, and he appeals to everybody on the ship, let's don't go yet, let's don't sail yet, because it's dangerous times. And if we sail right now, we're going to be in trouble. But they refuse to listen to his warning, and as they begin to sail, sure enough, they find themselves in the midst of a hurricane, in the midst of a storm. Now, you and I may not be on a ship, we may not be uh, sailors per se, but all of us are on a journey. We're on the sea of life, journeying on a sea of life, or the sea of life. And at times, as you sail in your life, things are calm and things are wonderful, and it's enjoyable to live. And thanks, man, I just love life and things are great. But there are seasons in your life and seasons in, in my life that we come across rough seas. We come across hard times. We come across no more what you could call would be maybe hurricanes in your life, storms in your life. And what we want to do this morning is we want to look at help in the hurricane and what Paul did and what we can do to see that help in the hurricane. So the first thing you want to look at is verse 20. And this is the fierceness of the storm. It says in verse 20, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Now in those days, when they were sailing, they would use the sun and stars to guide them, to give them direction. But in this case, it has been stormy, it's been cloudy, and they can't see their way. In fact, they don't even know where they are in the midst of, of this storm. And so many times in the midst of adversity or in the hurricanes of your life, in my life, it is easy to get disoriented. It's easy to lose focus and to forget where you are in your walk with Christ. Whenever storms come against you, when the clouds over, overcome your life and in your path and you can't seem to see what's going on in your life and you don't seem to have any direction, then you don't know where you're headed. And the thing about it is, the help in the hurricane in this instance, and in every instance, is, is that you've got to keep your eyes focused on Christ. you always got to be looking towards Jesus Christ. He is the help in the hurricane of your life. No matter how severe a storm may be in your life, no matter how hard that it gets, and, and some of you have went through storms a whole lot worse than I have ever been in. And it's the great faith that, that I see in you and that others see in you and that we see in Paul here that gives us the strength to carry on as we look towards Christ and knowing that Jesus Christ will see us through the storms. So we see right now the sailors in this particular time in Paul, they're all disoriented. But not only are they disoriented, they get discouraged. Because listen to the last part of verse 20. It says, All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. So in the midst of this fierce storm, they, all survival seems to be lost. They say, man, we are in severe trouble. And they begin to resign themselves to defeat. They begin to think, man, 
It's over for us. Uh, we're, we're going down in this, in this storm. We're going to lose our life. And that's exactly, listen, look, look at me real quick. That's exactly the frame of mind that Satan wants you to have when you're in the midst of a situation. When you're in the midst of a storm or a hurricane, and that is the title of the message, so you're going to hear me say hurricane a whole lot today. But while you're in the midst of the hurricane that you face, it is, it, the devil would have nothing more, or no greater thing but then for you to, to lose focus. What he wants you to do is he wants you to, to divert your focus off of Christ and look into Christ and look at the storm. See, that's exactly what happened to Peter when Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk on the water. As he walked on the water looking at Christ, he was able to overcome the storm because he walked in the midst of a storm also. But as he looked at Jesus, he was able to walk on that storm over the water and go right to Jesus. But when he took his eyes off of Christ and began to focus on the problem that was about around him and began to focus on the storm that was at hand, that's when he began to sink. And see, so Satan would have you to believe that you can't get out of the storm. Satan would have you to believe that, that, that no matter what you do, there is no help in the storm. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the help in the storm that you face right now. And no doubt, as we do our prayer requests, no doubt as we talk about that, we know that in the midst of our congregation, in the midst of the families of some of our congregation, there are folks in the midst of storms of their life. You know, and we hear these things, you know, but I'm here to tell you, we, you must keep your eyes focused on Christ. He is the help in your hurricane. Uh, you know, we're going to be praying for you, each and every one, no matter what it may be, and we want to pray, and that's the next thing. I want you to look at the fervency of the prayer. Look at verse 21. It says, But after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosened from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. Now that's basically he's saying, I told you so. I told y'all we shouldn't have won. Now he might not have said y'all, but he said, I told you guys we shouldn't have won, shouldn't have left. But see, but in the context of what's going on, the storm is so intense. Verse 14 going down into verse 20, it describes what is going on. And the storm is so intense they have lost control of the ship. The captain has decided to say, hey, we're just going to let it go. There's nothing we can do. So we said, so their path is literally being controlled by the storm that they're in. And the storm is so bad and it's, and it's raging to such a point that they start throwing things overboard to lighten the ship. They said, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. If we don't get rid of all this stuff, we're going to begin to sink. And so, maybe you're in a situation right now that resembles this situation that these guys are in. I mean, the storm is severe. I mean, you're facing a hardship, a, a problem. And, and the situation is so, is so desperate that, that it's directing the course of your life. I mean, it is it's directing your course, and it seems that your life is, is spiraling out of control. In fact... You've even tried to do things like they did. They tried to start throwing things overboard. And you may even try to, to get rid of hindrances and try to get rid of anything that you think is the problem. But the storm is still going on. And it's still happening in your life. But look what Paul, this, now I talked to you about, and I give you that, the, the, the line, the fervency of the storm. Listen to what Paul does in 21. It says, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said. So Paul comes up from the bottom where he has been praying and seeking God. Not eating, just praying and seeking God. He walks up in the midst of them and begins to share with them what he, uh, the things that God had been telling him. So they had lost hope. They had lost sight. They had lost the reason to, basically, they had committed themselves, man, we're, our, this thing is over. But while they are suffering and, and losing hope, Paul is in the midst of the storm, 
praying fervently to God and seeking God's face in the midst of everything that's going on. See, what happens is, is that we use prayer as a last resort. Now, that's what happens. We'll say, well, well at least, if you ever made this statement, well, at least we can pray. Yeah, you have, haven't you? Well, at least we can pray. No, the greatest thing that you and I can do is pray. It should be our first line of defense, not the last thing. No matter. We, in fact, you should be prayed up to such a point that that you know that you that when you get down, you know that God is hearing you. Amen. What happens sometimes? is that you haven't prayed in such a long time, you don't even know if God's going to hear you if you pray. And if you're in that situation, I'm here to tell you, God, is not, He's not left you. God still wants to hear from you. God still loves you. God never stopped loving you. It's just like the prodigal son. But let's, let's bring the prodigal son to a... To a to bring it up to date to right now. If any of you that are parents had your child go off and get wayward and all of a sudden you get a phone call and it's that child and they say, Mama or Daddy, I just need to talk to you. I need you. There's not one of you that love your child is going to say, Hey, don't call me. You must have the wrong number. And that's how God is so much better than that. God is waiting to hear from you. And so here we have Paul praying and seeking Christ in the midst of all that's going on. And so this is where you get help in the hurricane. It's when you get on your knees, get on your face before the Lord, and seek Him and trust Him. And then I want you to look at verse 23 and 24. I want you to see the faithfulness of the Lord. Now, this is what happens in verse 23. Listen to this. For there stood by me, and this is Paul. Remember, he stood in the midst of the guys, and he's talking to them about what God has showed them. He says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. So Paul was standing there in the midst of these guys, and he says, guys, let me tell you about God's presence. He said, let me tell you about Him. Said, so Paul was sure of them. He said, hey, I have been in the presence of the Lord. I mean, while they are all fearful, while they're all hopeless, Paul has been praying fervently, and in the midst of this hurricane that's happening, he is seeking the very face of God. And he says, hey, guys, no matter what storm you're facing, we have the presence of God. If you are a born-again Christian, you are never, ever in a storm by yourself. You always have the presence of the Lord. And He's always there. And you may say to me, say, well, Pastor Tom, I, I, can't, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't feel it sometimes. I can't, I can't sense him sometimes. But you know what? When Paul was in the midst of that ship praying and the clouds was all around and, and, the, and the waves are going over the ship, I'm sure he may have thought, well, I can't see it. I can't feel it right now. But he never stopped praying. And God assured him that I am with y'all during this storm. Now listen, we all face storms. Storms, are, they're unavoidable, but you never face a storm by yourself. You never do. So he tells them about God's presence. But here's something that I, that I thought, man, I love this right here. I, I, when I'm studying this, I almost had a spell. Listen to this. In verse 23, the last part of that, he talks about God's possession. Listen to this. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am 
and whom I serve. Now, while the rest of them are in a state of panic, Paul says, I belong to the Lord. I belong to God. I mean, I'm His. I'm secure in the hand of the Savior. It doesn't matter what storm comes along in your life. It doesn't matter what's going on, what hurricane may come along. If you are born again Christian, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you belong to Him. And when you are in His hand, nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Amen? What an awesome thing that that is it. You'll never, listen, you will never face a storm alone. And you'll never face a storm that is too big for God to take care of. And listen, sometimes God gets you out of a storm, but sometimes God goes with you in the midst of the storm. I think about, and I love these stories, and I know you probably get tired of hearing them, but listen, whenever Daniel was in the lion's den, he still went in the lion's den. He still got put in the lion's den, but God was with him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they still got cast in the fiery furnace, but in the midst of the fire's furnace, when they opened up the door, they said, look, there's one like the Son of Man. And it was Jesus Christ. In the midst of the storm, sometimes He takes you out of it, but sometimes He allows you to go through the midst of a storm. But He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He's always there for you. Now, sometimes, the question come up, or the statement will come up, well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know the hurricane I'm in, and, and, and I don't. I can go, all I can do is go by what the Word of God says and go about my own experience, how God has seen me and Linda through the storms of life in our life. I'm not going to go through all the things that happened to us and went through, but God has always been faithful. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. But then there, I want you to look at the, the faith of the apostle in verse 25. Now, this is kind of funny to me because he says, he says Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Now, y'all got to understand what's happening here. The storm hadn't stopped. Y'all understand? Now, here's Paul. He said, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you all about Jesus. I've been praying. I'm going to tell you about his presence. His presence. I'm going to tell you about that I'm his possession right now. But now, I want you to be of good cheer, for I believe... But here's the thing, he says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. So, you see Paul having peace right here. He says, wherefore, be of good cheer. He's saying all this, not sitting on the beach, drinking a Diet Coke in the sun out eating chips. He's saying this in the midst of a hurricane when the waves are going over the ship, the ship's about to break. In fact, it does get shipwrecked. In a couple weeks, I'll preach the rest of this message. But listen, Paul urges them to be of good cheer. Why? Because Paul knows that he keeps in perfect peace whose mind it stayed on Jesus. In perfect peace. It means complete peace. So he says, sirs, be of good cheer. And here's the thing. For I believe God. Christian person, you can believe God because the Lord purchased you, paid for you, paid your sin debt, paid for every sin, that you would ever commit. Washed your sins white as snow. And rose, not only down the cross for you, He rose from the dead that you may know that you may have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the Bible says this right here, 
if He would not withhold His own Son from you, why would He not give you other things to help you? Where does your help come from? It comes from the Lord. Your help in the hurricane. Listen to what it says in Romans 8, 31 and 32. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? And then there's the promise. He says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. So Paul's saying, I believe God. See, you've got two choices this morning or today. You can either believe God or you can believe what the devil's trying to tell you. I mean, you can choose to believe God and His promises, and His promises never fail. And He, he, he loves you. And Satan is a liar and a murderer. He's been a liar and a thief and a murderer from the beginning. So you can choose to believe what God tells you about your life. Or you can choose to believe what the devil's saying. So don't allow the devil to take your focus off of Christ and put it on the storms around you. Keep your eyes on Jesus and walk above the storms that are in your life right now.